Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, and I'm Sean. And in this short video, we're going to be talking about some of the questions that you ask us in March. These are some of the most commonly asked questions we get year after year, and we can sort of guess what they're going to be. Sometimes there's a little variation on them, a little twist, but I think in this short video, we're going to cover four or five, and hopefully we will answer a lot of the questions that you might have in your mind uh, about wildlife and birds at this time of year. So the first one, Sean, is about the dawn chorus. What do people tend to want to know about the dawn chorus? Yeah, so obviously the dawn chorus almost signifies the start of the nesting season. So people get very, very excited about what to expect, what to hear, when to go and listen to it. So we say to people that if you want to go out and listen to the bird song for the dawn chorus, often um, leave about an hour before sunrise, pick a nice spot and just sit and enjoy it. Um, you'll hear like such a very different species um, and it's just such like a wonderful time of the year. Now, am I right in thinking that birds sing in a particular order? So typically the blackbird would be first, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. So some of our common bird species often heard first. So the blackbird's one, also the robin. They have a, such like a cheerful song that you can hear that often from the start of the dawn chorus. Then you've got your great tits and other tit species. And they all sort of, yeah, they'll sing in sequence. So it's actually quite like a nice audio to listen to. And it's, it's quite handy at the beginning to work out, oh, to separate them, but as they all come together in this fantastic free concert, nature's free concert, I like to think of it as, it's quite hard to pick out the different, different birds, isn't it? Not that it matters, you don't have to know what every bird is, but are there any tips to identify some of the key singers, the key singing stars of the show? So it can be quite difficult. Um, what we often say is that if you perhaps um, record some of the song, you can then play it back at your own time and listen to any of the audio clips on our website. They're really, really useful. And it just means you can listen again and enjoy it again, or to try and work out for a process how to work out the species. Uh, really good tip. And of course, as birds arrive in the country on migration, you've got things like Chiff Chaff and Willow Warbler and Black Cap all joining the throng of, um, of singers. So it might start, um, I suppose, in early March, perhaps with Blackbird, Robin, Great Tit, Chaffinch chipping in. And then it reaches a crescendo in early May. Is that right? Yeah. By sort of May, that's when the majority of birds will be in full swing of the nesting season. So, yeah, like you said, all the migrants will be here. You'll even have like, you know, the continued song from our lovely garden native species. And yeah, they'll come all together in a huge like orchestra. And it's quite beautiful to listen to. So that's our advice. Make the effort to get up before dawn, um, get outside while it's still dark and find somewhere to listen. Uh, it really is worth it. And it's a real treat at this time of year. Now, the reason that birds are singing is uh, not just for, uh, well, not for our pleasure, really, although it, it is a delightful thing, but it's to uh, defend their patch, their territory, and to attract a, a partner. And of course, they will be nesting. So who's going to be nesting right now in March? So some of the first birds to nest will be, again, your common garden bird species. So you've got your, your blue tits, your house sparrows. They all typically begin sort of building their nests sort of from March onwards. Um, you might just see them, you know, gathering materials, um, sort of, you know, just chirping to one another to communicate where to find everything. And yeah, you'll, you'll start noticing them going to back and forth to their nesting site as they construct that nest. And how lucky would you be to be able to watch that from your window? I've got nest boxes positioned outside, but nothing's moved in just yet because it takes a little while for birds to find a new nesting site, doesn't it? It can do. Birds are very, very fussy. We always get people ask us, um, why is my nest, not, nest box not being used? And we say, you have to just give them time. Birds are quite particular. So, you know, you have to just let them get on with it. And yeah, watching them is such a wonderful thing to see. And it's not too late to put up a nest box, is it? We could still be putting them up at the beginning of March? You can still put them up at that time, although birds might be a little bit wary. Um, they have to obviously make sure it's safe and very, um, you know, suitable for them. Um, if you follow our guidelines, which you can obviously find on our website, um, and you position it correctly, then it will be the safest place for the birds. 
Um, and if, it, if that's perfect, then there's no reason why the birds won't start using it. And another question I was going to throw at you is uh, some birds nest more than once in a year, don't they? So I think starlings, for example, they'll they'll have one uh, one clutch of eggs, one brood, they'll raise those chicks and then bravely they'll take on another batch, won't they? Um, yeah. how, are there any birds that nest two, you know, sort of two or three times that we might see in and around our homes and gardens? Yeah, absolutely. You'd be surprised. Um, most of the sort of garden species will have at least two to three broods. So you might see them at the very start of the nesting season rear one brood of chicks and then about four weeks later you'll see a second and yeah they will continue throughout the nesting period. So for example the blackbirds they might have two to three. Um, even um, like the swallow they could also have two to three broods. So again you've got that whole lovely nesting period where it's not just one group of babies it's multiple. So yeah. Oh, must be exhausting. Poor birds, I don't know how they do it. But one thing you can do to help them is to provide, um, we've well, mentioned nest boxes, but also provide a little bit of extra nesting material to make it that bit easier, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. So for example, you could put out some um, like natural fibres, a bit of planting material, natural grasses, anything like that would really appeal to our garden birds. Um, with some species, for example, the song thrush, the blackbirds, and also house martin, they require mud to build their nest. So if you just create a little muddy puddle, that will help them through the drier weather, just to help construct their nest. House martins in particular struggle, don't they, when there's uh, when it's really dry and we go through a really dry period. So um, they're not going to be back quite yet, are they? Or are we talking sort of towards the end of the month? April. Yeah, exactly. So they won't start arriving really until sort of April, maybe even around May time, because obviously they're migrating from Africa. So they are a little bit later. But then, yeah, you'll see them through the skies, um, building their little mud um, homes um, for their chicks. Yeah. Oh, there's really there's really so much that we have to look forward to, I think. Um, so not only have we got the arrival of those birds that spend the summer with us, we've got nesting, we've got chicks, we've got so much that we can watch. Um, and, and as I say, some people may be lucky enough to see it from their own windows. Now, as those chicks are, uh, they hatch, uh, the parents then get super busy and they're flying back and forth and you'll see them catching food and taking it over to them. Um, what I find interesting actually is a lot of birds that will eat seeds and nuts in the winter will be eating soft food now won't they sort of um, bugs and beetles and worms so blue tits and sparrows any others that we should look out for yeah so um for example like your robins they're very typical ground feeders um if we offer them mealworms they absolutely love them so if we could we can if watch them from our gardens and you see them taking slugs snails all things like that they really enjoy them and if you want to carry on putting food out on your bird feeders we, we do recommend that, that you can feed birds all year round, but you have to be a little bit sensible about it, don't you, particularly when there's younger birds? Absolutely. I think with younger birds, there's obviously the risk of choking, um, particularly with peanuts. Whilst obviously the parent birds, they can, you know, take them whole. That's absolutely fine. The younger birds, it's just not very safe. So if it was offered a peanuts, um, always just use um, whole peanuts from a mesh feeder and that just makes it safer for them. And soaked mealworms as well go down a tree, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Mealworms are a perfect, um, nutritious source of food, lots of protein for the birds. Um, you can soften them overnight in some water, the same with um, like dried fruits. Um, it just makes it more palatable. And for the younger chicks, that's such an important thing. And finally, for a lot of these birds that we're talking about, um, these insect eaters, you couldn't help a little bit further by attracting insects to your garden, of course, can't you? Absolutely. By encouraging insects, it just means that you're going to support the birds. But obviously, with like the plants and like flowering plants, especially, it just means that you're going to have greater biodiversity as well. So anything like um, like flowering plants will attract the bees and the butterflies, and they're all excellent for your garden. Excellent. Lots to get on with and lots to look forward to. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you.